Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, my brethren and sisters of this world. Today, I'm going to be bringing you a message, and the title of the message is, If you are burning with sexual desire, get married and do not fornicate. If you are burning with sexual desire, get married and do not fornicate. And the scripture reading is going to be coming from the book of First Corinthians chapter 7. And I read, Now concerning the things ye of ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. So, as the scripture went on, Paul stated, you know, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. It's good. You can be just like that. You don't have to have a woman around you. It's okay. But only one problem he, he, he saw. And that's why he decided to make us to come to our senses and try to do the right thing for God to bless us. Verse 2. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. To avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. It is terrible. You can you know the Bible says when you look after a woman you commit adultery. Then you know you you going around, you know. Having sex with the other one, having sex with the other one, it's it's a terrible sin. God do not like it. It's fornication. Having sex with somebody who you are not married to, it's fornication. God do not like it. So, but if you are so Paul told us that if you are burning without sexual desire, then go ahead and marry. Hallelujah. If you are burning with that sexual desire, go ahead and marry. Today, I found, you know, some people today, you know, they uh, they have done something that is, is against what the Bible says. It's it against what the Bible says. That's why our brother, you know, Peter. Peter, when he was going, you know, when they have every mission that Peter, Peter went on, Peter took along his wife. Because, again, yeah, because of the devil not to come in to tempt you. How can you be having your, your, your husband, he's way far over the sea, and you f far on the other side? Is, is, is the, the, the devil going to step in? The devil going to step in? It's terrible. You can pray, 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 pray. You got to really do fasting and pray properly. But God said it. It's not good. Hallelujah. It's not good for a man to be with all his wife. You way in Jerusalem, all the other far away in, you know, uh, Egypt. It's terrible. So let me go ahead. Verse 3. Let the, the husband render unto his wife the due benevolent. Benevolent means to say, Kindness, that's the definition of benevolent. Kindness, let the, the husband show to his wife benevolent kindness. And let the wife too show to her husband benevolent the kindness to one another. Show kindness to one another. That's part of the second scene today in America. Now the woman got to go and go work for so like 40 hours. The men going to go work for 40 hours. And when they come, you know, sexually, they are not active. When other person touch the other person, oh, no, I'm tired. You know, I, you know, I, I, I work double. No. The Bible says that from the book of Colossians, chapter 4, verse 6, let her have to talk to, let your talk be with grace, sissy, with salt. Let her have to talk to your partner. The Bible says if you, the only time you can evolve one another is say when you are fasting or praying, then you can tell your partner, say, oh, I'm fasting and praying. Then later on, y'all can jump together. So Satan should not be able to step in with a temptation and be able to cause trouble. Hallelujah. Then to my greatest surprise today, some people marry, they marry, they, they yeah, far away. Then the partner, the wife, 
on the other side. All the hustler is on the other side and they're right here. Are you killing me? Are you killing me? <laughs> you 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 really gotta you, you got to see God every day. Even God even warn you that it's not good. So the devil should not be able to step into your, your relationship. My people, that said the law, not me, not even Paul, but God said it. It's not good. I want our brother, brother Peter. When Peter go on his mission, can you imagine you, you're not on any mission for God? Then your husband fire away or your wife fire away and you on the other side. Peter took a lot of his wife. All the mission that he went on. So, it's terrible for your partner to be on the other side and you on the other side. Why you got and why you you're praying? The Bible tells you that you can avoid one another except when you're fasting and praying. They tell your husband say, Oh no. But you wait there. Do you know what is going on there on the other side? Because Satan is all over. Satan. Let me read verse 4. The wife had not power of her own body, but the husband. Likewise, also, the husband had not power of his own body, but the wife. So all out that I lay, I know, I know that Tita Togi, oh me, I tired, I keep from working. The Bible says you don't have authority over your own body. Your husband has authority over your body. Likewise, the husband does not have authority over his body. The wife has authority over her husband's body. The only time you can tell your husband or your husband can tell you, say, oh, I don't want to do nothing. I'm, I'm best, I'm tired, this and that. Except that what I'm tired, say, we don't want to hear it. God do not want to even hear it. Except when, that, when you are fasting and you are praying. That's the only time. But if you really, really say you work hard and whatsoever, then you got to apply Colossians chapter 4 verse 6. You got to apply it in the Proverbs chapter 15 verse 1. Or you got to apply it in a calm way. Benevolent. You got to apply benevolent. Kindness. Hallelujah. Oh, my brother and sister. The world right now we're living in. Everything that God gave me, I'm going to, I will not compromise. I will say it. How can you say you married a summer and the person way on the other side and you here? Are you kidding me? Do you know what set up? Oh, let me read for you again. Verse 5. Defraud yet not one another. That one defraud, you know what it means. You know you want to oh, you want to cheat and you want to do something all the way. And sometimes it's not only you want to do it, but Satan, he has that, that, that trick. You're gonna tell him what you're gonna tell him, play on your husband and play on, on your wife. Say, you sit down there, he way down there on the other side there, and you want to do something. Is she fire away? How would she know? How would he know? You see, that's what the Bible said. The only time you can avoid one another, how can you? You're not even on a mission for God, and you fire away your husband, fire away. And some people, they, they may not be very honest, even may not want to cheat, but the devil, that's what the Bible said. Let me let me read it. First five. Defraud yet not one another. Let me repeat it one more time. Defraud yet not one the other. Except be for the consent for a time that ye may give yourself to fasting and prayers and come together again that Satan may not tempt or Satan may not tempt you not or your partner. 
said, so don't be able to tempt you or your partner. You see what the Bible said right there? So when you all accept, the, the, the only time you can, do, you know, defraud or try to, you know, it's not worse, the war right there, so it's not even that good, that war. I mean, it's not a good war. The only time you can stop your husband say, oh, please, honey, I don't want to do this, except when someone, one of you guys, are fasting to pray. Then later on, you can come together. So Satan may not be able to step into your relationship and cause trouble. But let me put it on a, on a scenario right now. You there, you, you went to Africa, you married. You married somebody. And a person there, so not almost a year, two years. Are you kidding me? Someone said you go, yes, and she's pregnant. Oh, my goodness. My people... What are you granted in the things of God? You, 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 you almost go into heaven though. You, the Bible, God said you will not do that. You got to ask God to be with you. When, when you, when you do any kind of things there, then definitely you won't give him God any chance. If you say you marry somebody right here and you, try, uh, and you let the person wear there. Oh my God, you got to... Don't give God any chance. Fasting, pray until that person can come immediately. Hallelujah. Fasting, pray. Do not give God rest until God can bring your partner quick, quickly. Because it's, it's too tempting. Anything can happen. Hallelujah. So anything can happen. Anything can happen. So you got to hurry up. To, and when the Bible said, do not, God said, don't give me rest. And you yourself will not rest until God can restore to you your blessing. Because it's so tempting. You wear on the other side, wear over the Atlantic Ocean. You wear on the other side of the other person, wear there on the other side. Are you kidding me? So the, my, only, my only concern or my only warning to you, do not get God rest. Until God can speed it up with the process. Do not give God rest. And you yourself will not rest. Don't rest. Don't rest. Because it's tempting. Fornication is not good. If your husband go there and has sex with anybody out of the marriage, he commit adultery, he, he fornicate. And you too, probably if you do the same thing on the side, do you commit adultery and you fornicate it. You marry, but you stay fornicating because you you sleeping with somebody, you come double trouble, adultery and fornication. Because the person who you have in sex with, that person is not married to you, so he committed a, a, a fornication with you. So a double trouble right there. You marry and he's not married. You are having sex, or you she not married and he married. And you have the sex, or she married, and he not married. You have the sex there on that side. Double trouble, fornication, and adultery. My brother and sister, when the Holy Spirit lead me, I'll be back. Let us pray. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. May God bless you. And I'll be back again. In Jesus' name. Amen.